Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful little Akim out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American. One is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. A hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And in this lesson, is gonna we're going to go into uh, what is the new covenant and who it's for. Because all these false notions and all this false understanding has been propagated all throughout the earth by these pagan Christians. Uh, basically saying that everyone can be bought into the second covenant. That the second covenant is, is uh, not exclusive to just the Israelites. But that's, that's a lie. You see, this is why we follow what's written, because according to what's written, it's only for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're going to show you according to prophecy, man. So, so like, let's go into, let's, let's start right here, where the most I made this, uh, this, this oath that he was going to bring Abraham and his seed into the everlasting covenant. Now, let's listen to it. This is Genesis 17 and 1. It says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty power. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will, mul and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and the most I taught with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now, Christians will take this and try to run with it thinking that it's talking about all the nations of the world. And that's not what it meant. Because you have to understand, at this time, it's other nations that's already around Abraham that has already been established. The Hamites in the earth, the, uh, the, the, uh, who else? The Hamites are here. I'm trying to think. At this time was, no, I, I don't think Moab and Ammon was here yet, but they eventually popped up. They sprang forth. You see, this wasn't talking about Everyone coming out of Abraham because we know that there were already other nations established before Abraham would even had a child. You see? It was talking about the nations that would come forth from Abraham and that, and that chief nation being who? The, the, the nation of Israel. You see, each tribe is a nation unto itself. And when you get even deeper into the understanding of, of what the Most High is going to bring his people into every man is a nation unto himself. You see, every Israelite man has a nation that he carries with him in his family jewels, man. So that's what the most I was talking about. And that's going to be fully fulfilled once we go into the kingdom of heaven to, 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 to multiply, to uh, be fruitful and multiply in, in, in fullness, man. So that's what the most I was talking about. He wasn't talking about all nations being of Abraham. He was talking about the families that, were gonna, that was going to come forth from Abraham. You see? The children of promise. Now it goes on to say, verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. This is all alluding to the Israelites, man. When you read the scripture with the proper understanding, it all alludes to the, the children of Israel being brought forth out of the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the narrative that the Bible follows. This is the narrative, the true narrative of the scriptures. Now, verse 7 goes on to say what? I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto, unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Do you hear that? Now, let's get oh, let's get this word for seed to show you it's talking about his physical descendants, man. 
Meaning you had to be born from Abraham. This, the word seed goes into Zerah. Seed, saw, and offspring. Now who came forth from Abraham? Isaac did. Who came forth from Isaac? Jacob and Esau. And who did the most High choose? He chose Jacob. And his descendants after him. That's the seed that the Most High promised to bless. So it says, well, offspring, descendants, prosperity, or posterity, children. That doesn't apply to all nations. It only applies to the seed that came forth from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Most High says what? He's going to do what? He's going to establish a covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy children after thee. This is what the Most High has promised to do for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. He hasn't promised to do this for all nations. But the pagan Christians have given the world this false notion of what the scriptures are really talking about. Because they're trying to include everyone in this thing. And that's not how it works. And we're going to show you according to what's written. Now verse 8 says what? And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. The Most High has never made that promise for all to all the nations man. The promised land is not promised to all nations. It's only promised to the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob once again. You see, now, when we jump forward to Jeremiah 31, right? And we'll jump down to verse 31 because it goes into what? The new covenant that, that the Most High promised to make with, with his people. And it lays it out plainly who this thing is for, man. Now, let's read. Jeremiah 31 and 31, it says what? Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's who the covenant is going to be made with. Never mentions anything about any heathen nations. And this point is reiterated in the book of uh, Hebrews, if I ain't mistaken. And we can get that next. Hebrews chapter 8, if I ain't mistaken. Salaki, Hebrews 10. You see? And that also cuts that false notion that you Christians have been pushing for all these centuries about what? The Old Testament being done away with. If that's the case, why was the Apostle Paul teaching from it? Why was the Messiah teaching from the Old Testament? Because all these things have to come to pass according to the Most High's promise. A promise that, will, that cannot be broken. That will not be broken. Because the Most High swore on himself that he would do this. You see? So Jeremiah 31 and 31 says what? Behold the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to that covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I were a husband, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. The Most High only made that covenant with the fathers of Israel. And this new covenant is, uh, is going to be made with the descendants of Israel. That's it. And you can go read about that first covenant that was made in Exodus chapter 24, starting at verse 3. Read on down. No nation was up under that covenant besides the Israelites. It was only given to the Israelites. You see? This is not for all nations, man. It, has, it never was and it never will be. And that's just the truth and reality of the matter, man. Now, let's see what it says, verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. But this will be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. That doesn't apply to all people, man. It's only going to be made with the Israelites. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The seed that the Most High promised that he was going to bring into this everlasting covenant. We just got it out of Genesis 17. You see? So Jeremiah 31 and, 30, uh, 31 and 33 
This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And will be their God and they shall be my people. Just like he promised to our forefather Abraham, man. The Most High is going to fulfill these things. Everything that the Most High promised to do, he's going to do it. <laughs> and as it tells us in Numbers 23 and 19, we know the Most High can't... It, the Most High is not a man that he should lie. So he's, he's going to put the law, statutes, and commandments in us, and we're going to be perfect, man. We're going to be living, breathing Bibles, man. It's going to be basically uh, downloaded into our spirits to keep it in perfection. And that's how we're going to govern the earth once we come into power. You, you nations are going to come and learn the righteous ways from, from the priests of the Most High, which are the Israelites. Verse 34 says what? And they shall teach no man every... And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them to, unto the greatest of them, Save Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. And this is what we're waiting to come into, according to the Most High's promise. That when we come into the Second Covenant, I wouldn't have to. I, I would not have to be making a video teaching about the Second Covenant. It's already going to be. It's already going to be in us to know. The only ones who are going to have to be have to be taught are you heathen nations, because you will never be brought into the onto the level that we're about to be brought into. Once the Lord Yahweh Shah comes to save us, man. We're going to be brought into a glory that can't be comprehended. We're going to be made gods on the earth. Completely righteous gods. And you heathen nations are going to come learn from us. Let's show you that real quick. Because this, this is, we're coming into this condition of complete righteousness to lead the world in righteousness, man. You see? And it's all it's all according to prophecy. And, and, and if those people who are dwelling in the land of Israel right now are, though, are, are the chosen people, why aren't they leading the world in righteousness according to prophecy, according to what the Most High said his people would be doing once they go back into the land? The reason they haven't fulfilled any of these prophecies is because they are not the Most High's people. They're not the true chosen people, man. They're putting on the front. It's a facade. They're imposters, man. Because this is what's going to happen once the Israelites are saved from captivity, brought into that second covenant to be made completely righteous. What's going to take place? Isaiah 2 and 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And, I, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Meaning what? Once the true people of the Lord come into power, we're going to be the supreme government on the earth. We're going to be above all nations' governments. And you won't, you won't have a say-so in the matter, man. You're going to run things how we tell you to run things. And it's going to be done in righteousness. You see? Verse 3 says, What? And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh shall from Jerusalem. You see that? You're going to come and learn the righteous ways of the Almighty God from His people. Because that's what we were set up to be on the earth, man. The pillars of righteousness, you see? Of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah to teach the world and lead the, the world in the righteous ways, man. This is what it's coming to once we come into that second covenant. This hasn't happened yet, once again, because the Israelites are still in captivity, waiting for the Lord to return to save them, man. You see? Now let's get it in Hebrews 10 to show you that it all goes together. Hebrews 10. Let's lock in. Hebrews 10 and we'll start at verse... Uh, Sixteen. And this is the Apostle Paul quoting. Um, hold 
Hold on. Well, that is, hey, we can get that one real quick. Hebrews 10 and 16 says, What? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and into their minds will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. You see that? That all alludes back to that that uh that second covenant that the most I promised to bring us into, man. You see? Oh, you know what? I, I know. Uh, it is Hebrew 8. Yep. And look, look, look at the precept. It goes back to Jeremiah 31 because this has to be fulfilled. This has to be brought to pass, man, according to what the Most High has promised. The Apostle Paul is quoting this, man. This is what he's teaching. And who is he teaching it to? To the Israelites because that's who this pertains to. We'll get that next for you. Hebrews 8 and 7 says what? For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. If we, as the Israelites, could have kept that first covenant, to perfection, there would have been no need for the second covenant. But because we're in these wicked these wicked bodies, you see, that's full of sin, we can't we couldn't keep that first covenant in perfection, man. This is why we needed the second. This is why we needed Yahweh to come and be a sacrifice for us to be to, to, to bring us into a better way. All according to the most high's will, man. Verse 8 says what? For finding fault with them, finding fault with who? With us. We're at fault. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. How did how, how are you Christians reading this thinking that you're a part of this? How are you pagan Christians, you heathen, you heathen, thinking that you're a part of this? Now you do have Israelites who are who, who, Practicing pagan Christianity right now because they don't know no better, but eventually they will be brought into it. Those Israelites, because this this covenant is for all Israel to be brought into eventually. But you heathen nations, you Edomites, <laughs> you 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 uh, you Moabites, you Ammonites, you Hamites, who all practice Christianity, this is not for you. If you're not the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is not for you. This is for the Most High's people. Us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's who this is for. Hebrews 8 and 8 says what? For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to that covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. See, it ain't going to be on that same type of type of level the first covenant was on because we was at fault we 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 have to be upgraded and made better that's why we have to be given new bodies righteous bodies perfect bodies you see godly bodies man so we can walk in the way of the most high as we're supposed to in perfection we're going to be upgraded man verse 10 says what for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days saith the lord I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And you hear that? You hear that right there all throughout the scriptures. I'm going to be their God. They're going to be my people. The Most High is alluding to the second covenant all throughout the scriptures. I'm going to upgrade them. Basically, that's what he's saying. I'm going to upgrade them and they're going to be my people. You see? Verse 11 says what? And they shall teach and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. You see how Israel is out here just wilding out in the earth. You see the, the men are out of order. The women are out of order. Nobody's considering the most high except for the, uh, the elect, the remnant. It won't be that way in the kingdom of heaven, man. Every Israelite, you see, is going to know our father, Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shah. Because every Israelite that's going to be born into the earth will be brought into this second covenant, man. And it's all made possible through our Lord Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. <laughs> the most wicked nigga that you know on the earth right now, he's going to be completely righteous eventually. You see? Because that's what the Most High has promised. 
Now he goes on to say, verse uh, 12, For I will be merciful to the unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. You see? And that's what we're, we're in. The, we're in a transition period, man. You see, we've been transitioning out of that that first covenant. We're moving through grace right now to enter into the Most High Second Covenant when the Lord Yahweh shall returns, man. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Now, I want to show you who this is all for because Romans nine lets you know. You see, this this thing is being made known, but the Christians, these pagan Christians, was will overlook these things and try to jump to John three sixteen and use it out of context. They want to jump to uh, there's neither Jew nor Greek and read it out of context, having no no not having the proper understanding of what it really means. Because at the end of the day, man, that, that one scripture does not trump everything else that's written. You can't just pull out John three sixteen to try to refute what what we're saying when we come in when we come in with fifteen to twenty different scriptures to prove our point. John 3.16 is not, not your trump card. You see, because when you, when you bring it out of context the way you do, you, you're causing a contradict, uh, uh, contradictory, man. Contradiction, <laughs> you see? And the Bible does not contradict itself. Your understanding of these scriptures is what's contradictory. So Romans 9 and 1, it lets it be known right here. I say the truth in Mashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, talking about his physical descendants, his physical kin, his physical family, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. What's the adoption, man? Let's get these words. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Strong's G, 5206. We are Thesia. We are Thesia. We are Thesia is the word in Greek. Adoption, adoption as sons. That relationship which the Most High was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations. You hear that? The Most High has made a relationship with the Israelites above all other nations, man. And he's made promise to the Israelites that he hasn't made to all nations, man. That's the truth of the scriptures. That's what's written. What else we got? And the glory which goes into the kingdom of heaven and the covenants. You see that? The covenants with an S goes into the first covenant and the new covenant. They're only for who? The Israelites. And the covenants, man. Strong's G twelve forty two, diatheke, diatheke, diatheke. A disposition, arrangement of any sort which one wishes to be valid, the last disposition which one makes of his earthly possessions after his death, a testament or will, a compact, a covenant, a testament. You see that? So the Old Testament and the New Testament pertain to who? The Israelites, man, is right here. And it says what? And the giving of the law. The laws were only given to the Israelites. Yeah, you heathen nation sin. You do. But the ones who are in violation are the ones who the laws were given to. And they were only given to who? Israel. They weren't given to all nations. Because the Israelites were supposed to lead the earth in righteousness. And we fell short of that. So we're the ones who are in transgression when it comes to breaking the Most High's first covenant. Because once again, it was only given to us. And it says what? The service of the Most High and the promises. The promises were only, they only pertain to who? The Israelite. This entire book pertains to Israel. Now you nations do have judgment written in here to come upon you. Yeah. But all the promises, the blessing, the kingdom of heaven, the new covenant, the old covenant, it only pertains to the 12 tribes of Israel, man. Point blank, period. Verse 5 says what? Whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Mashiach came, who is over all the most high blessed forever. So let it be. So the, the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, he only came for the Israelites, as it is written. This is not something we're making up. It's, it's written that he only came to save his people from their sins. 
That's why he was sacrificed, man. He wasn't sacrificed for the entire world. He was sacrificed to bring his people into the second covenant. <laughs> so we can be saved from this wicked and decrepit state that we're in right now. You see? So the new covenant is for the is for the Israelites, man. The Israelites only, beginning with the remnant. <laughs> now, what's it some else I wanted to get? Oh, you know what? And I'll wrap it up on this one, man. Let's get this one. This is uh one of my favorite Psalms 105. Because these things are all throughout the scripture, man. It prove, proves our point every time we go into them. Psalms 105 and 6, it says, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is Yahweh our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He have remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham, and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Where does it mention anything about anyone outside of Israel? It never does. Because it all pertains to Israel, man. It all pertains to the 12 tribes. That's what this Bible is about. It was never meant for all of you nations to have our book into you, in your possession. The Holy Bible is for the holy people, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, according to what the Most High has ordained, man. Now, what did the Most High tell us? Saying unto thee will I give, uh, saying unto thee will I give, all, uh, give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. And that's what the Most High is going to bring us back into. But when we go back this time, this final time, we're going to go back in perfection according to what the Most High has promised, man. So this is what it is. You see? Like it or not, this is the truth, man. This is the reality of the matter. This is what, this is the, uh, everything happening in the earth is leading, all leading up to the most high, fulfilling his promises to the, to his people. You see? Point blank period. So Lord willing, that was edifying, man. I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful little I came out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah has created us to do. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Baba.